Hi everybody, I'm Neha, I'm founder and CEO of Zero Circle. Zero Circle is a material science company based in India and at Zero Circle we make ocean safe materials from planet cooling resources also known as seaweeds. While we all understand the implication of plastics on our planet, in our oceans and microplastics that are having a detrimental impact on the health of the marine life, we also need to understand the impact of microplastics on the climate and the ocean and the biological function they actually uh, stop from happening, which is the conversion of oxygen at the, uh, on the upper sea. But when we start looking at alternatives of plastics, which do not break down into microplastics, these materials are bio-based materials. Uh, but the challenges of the bio-based materials are many. One of the very important uh, challenges of the, uh, of the biomaterials is the resources. Most of these bio-based materials require land and water. The second problem is that the, uh, the challenge that you see with the sustainability around the scalability of the material. You can't scale these materials and put them into traditional lines. And the third one is the cost. And the very important one is the regulation. Most of these bio-based materials are synthesized to such a degree that when they go back into the environment, they break down into microplastics and they require special infrastructure for it to be recovered. Our resource is seaweed. Uh, it also, we also use this seaweed from the region which uh, creates 97% of the seaweed uh, for the entire world. The region that we represent also has the maximum amount of plastic produ producers and maximum amount of uh, the trade that happens for textile happens from Asia. So when we start solving the problem of where it's being created, what is the biomass and who's going to consume this product, a large part of it happens out of Asia. We also need to understand 80% of the mismanaged plastic that enters the ocean also happens out of Asia. So the impact happens in Asia, the production happens in Asia, and the consumption of the biomass also happens in Asia. With that magical crop, we've created three materials. One is the pellet that goes into your traditional lines. This material makes the thin films, which is the jacket of your noodles, it's the carry bags that you, uh, you, you use from your supermarkets. Uh, this is a material that has been tested at scale in a production line. Uh, the films that come out of it are marine life safe, are marine degradable and soil compostable. The second product that we've created is the coating. The coating that sits on the surface of the paper and makes the paper high performing. And the third one is the paper itself. This paper has been made from the largest algal bloom that floats in the Atlantic Ocean. But when we start talking about scale, it's important to understand the property of a material versus whether it can go into a conventional line. And the second part, the most important part, is how fast can it go in a conventional line because that's where the dropage is. We created this coating that would perform just well for our markets. However, when it would go into the conventional line, your throughputs would completely stop. Right? You're talking about from seconds to minutes. And that requires uh, a lot of conviction with converters for high adoption. We've created a differentiated technology that goes into a conventional line with very, very high throughputs. Similarly, to make paper out of a natural biomass is easy. But when you want to produce paper with high throughputs, uh, which comes at a cost which is affordable because at the end of the day we're making a material for the commodity market. So the commodity markets need to understand that needs, this needs to happen at scale and at a price which is convincing for the consumer and the brands. We've created this paper which matches the sp uh, speeds and the cost of the conventional paper that you get in the market which is the virgin paper. We started out in 2020. Uh, we were a small company then. In 2022, we created our first input material that goes into the uh, conventional lines. And now in 2024, we've been able to scale this and we're very happy to uh, share that our, co our commercial facility is also ready. The technical approach that we take is, while the seaweed polymer itself is fascinating, it requires a certain amount of boosting in the polymer. So we try to change the structure of this seaweed polymer while, while maintaining the ocean-safe chemi uh, ocean chemistry and soil-safe chemistry. 
that helps in changing a lot of the problems that we see with seaweed polymers. One is that it is not stable in different climatic conditions, so we're able to manage that. Another important function is when you're adding these seaweed polymers, they go into the chemistry of the cosmetics that you apply on your face, the glues, the adhesives, the inks, we're actually making this material compatible so it can eliminate the plastics that you don't even see in real life. The markets that we're tapping into is, uh, the number one market is the fashion industry. The reason why we go after fashion and F&B is because uh, the, the most of the trade that happens, happens out of Asia. And it's important to tackle that right in the beginning. And the second one for our business is because the sales cycles are shorter and consumers are more aware of the problems. So that's one of the reasons why we go after fashion and, uh, and F&B markets. Um, while we have been validating our product, we've been validating our product not just with the converters, but we've also been validating our products with the brands so we can build out the entire ecosystem. Uh, we have multiple uh, LOIs. We have been validating this for the last three years. And uh, we patented our technology last year, and we are continuing to patent our technology for the glues and the coatings in the market as well. Now, a very important uh, question comes when we start looking at seaweed as a biomass. While you can use seaweed, there's only limited seaweed that's available in the market. So how do you create partnerships which are sustainable and responsible? And the reason why uh, it's important is you do not want to take more from the ocean than what it gives you. We've created partnerships which are responsible partnerships with fertilizer companies, one of the largest fertilizer companies. And the reason for that is we're creating mutually exclusive compounds so that we're not increasing the load on the supply chain as it starts growing. Another way that we work with uh, different partners is we partner with biorefineries and we create a polymeric grade. So far, the industry has been creating extracts which are extremely um, synthesized. For the, uh, for the food industry, what we are trying to do is we're trying to create a grade that can replace the plastics so that the product that you finally get is more optimum for its functionality. We've been recognized for uh, the work that we have done. Uh, we've recently been recognized for uh, uh, the work that we've done with the, with the thin films. Our thin films were tested in Seattle Aquarium, uh, which was uh, fed into the gut of a whale, simulated of course and our material was declared marine life safe and that is when uh, we became one of the grand prize winners of the Tom Ford Challenge. We've also been uh, uh, given uh, honor from the UNIDO team for uh, doing responsible work for the planet. Thank you.